This sounds like a fucking weird ass Pornhub title. What's up TBS crew? It's your boy Steph back with another reaction. This time we have Bee Buster, who we haven't had on the channel in a while. The night I had a naked intruder, Reddit stories, let's not meet. Um, uploaded June 10th, 2019. Now we haven't heard from Bee Buster in a while. I'm gonna try to start getting back into his videos because like I said, He's been hella consistent, ugh, hella consistent, and, you know, I gotta, you know, just gotta show B-Buster some love, man. I ain't seen him in a while, you know, I haven't listened to any of his stories in a while, so I'm gonna try to, you know, get more of him on the channel, along with the, my normal people that I watch and listen to. But uh, down in the description will be a link to B Buster's channel, a link to this original video so y'all can see it for yourselves without my commentary. Also, will be links to all of my social medias. Get at your boy and see the personal life that I don't upload to YouTube. Without further ado, let's get into it. The title was what caught me, but y'all already know that. This shit's so funny. Well, I grew funny. up in a small town in the Midwest where you left your doors unlocked and just came home when the streetlights turn on for dusk. Already bullshit. After man. moving away for college, I decided to move back to my quiet, sleepy hometown in one of the yeah, two I... apartment buildings. No. I'm living there for roughly three months when one night I go to sleep early on a Friday night. Now, I'm a reasonably hard sleeper, so when I wake in the middle of the night to noises, I'm immediately alarmed. I'm going to describe my apartment layout for a better understanding as well. So, as you walk in the front door, the kitchen is to the left and the living room is to the right. But there's a hallway straight ahead with one bedroom at the end. My bathroom is to the left in the hall, and my bedroom is to the right. Right. I get okay. up from my bed and walk around to the end of the bed, and pick my head out of the bedroom door. I look to the left to see my front door open to the outside hallway. There's also a loud voice coming from the enlightened kitchen. From my vantage point, though, I'm unable to see into my kitchen. And honestly, I froze. But this fact is uh, something that I've left out of the telling of this story since. It's not something that I'm proud of, for sure, but I want to relay this story in its entirety. It may have only been a couple of heartbeats, but to me, it just felt like an eternity. So, I eventually come to my senses, though, after realizing that I've stopped unconsciously breathing. I take a shallow breath to steady my mind and gather my bravery. There's no thought process about what to do at this point, but I let my body and my instincts take over. I turn around and head back to the far side of my bed. I grab my phone from the nightstand and quietly remove it from the charger. Luckily, my bed frame is high enough for me to squeeze under without much difficulty. I immediately realize, though, that there is no escape from my hiding spot if things turn south. I'll just have to rely on my luck to eventually get through this. I dial 911 and a woman answers and asks about my emergency. I briefly explain in a whisper that an unknown man is in my apartment and that I'm currently safe. I lay there listening to the chaos in my home, currently. reassured by the presence of my cat, Marcy, laying under the bed with me. It seems to me that the person in my house is on a phone call based on the one-sided rambling. I tell the operator this fact and explain my fear that he's going to bring other people into my home. He was making enough sound to allow me to give a play-by-play -play on the call, kind of. He starts screaming about killing someone. And at this point, I'm unsure whether he's talking to the person on the phone or if he knows that I'm there. The voice is unfamiliar, but this does little to ease my terror. He then starts ringing the doorbell in the outside hallway and yelling for me to come out. My blood runs cold as... I realize that he might come to try and find me too. But Marcy is alarmed by the doorbell that doesn't cease ringing and she creeps out from under the bed. I panic because, well, what if he hurts her? So I start whispering as loudly as possible to get her attention without letting him know my location. But she senses my unease and crawls back under the bed with me though. At this point, it's felt like an eternity has passed and I ask the operator how long until the police arrive. But she's unsure, but assures me that they're Fuck definitely on their way. But my town is roughly a 30-minute drive to the nearest city police, but I assume there's a highway patrol that would be coming soon. Right. Little did I know, though, that safety was in to rush to get me. 
I hear him walking around my apartment and enters my extra bedroom, which is my storage room with a bed. He hasn't stopped yelling, and I'm still unaware whether he's on the phone or not. I hear him mention that it must be a kid's room. I shush the operator because he ceased his screaming for the moment. I hear more noises, like he's going through boxes and throwing things. And then my fear is realized as I hear him quietly enter my room. I see his feet walk to my closet from my vantage point. He starts going through my clothes and emptying my hamper onto the floor. He turns around and walks to my bed and sits down, and at this point, I just stopped breathing. I think he lays down at this point since the pressure of the bed lessens on top of me. He's deadly silent, and I'm still holding my breath. They're shuffling and moving around, and he gets up and walks out of the room. I take a shallow breath and steady my conviction. He starts making noise again, like he's throwing and punching things or something, and I inform the operator that he was just in my room and the police need to hurry. I didn't know how long I could keep Marcy under the bed and was concerned about what would happen if he actually did find me. He walks back into the kids' room quietly. I shush the operator again because she is continually asking me for a play-by-play, -play and I hear him breathing from the other room. After the quietest few minutes of my life, he yells, who's there, and I freeze again, listening for a moment. But nothing. I'm starting to get lightheaded from my shallow breathing. The silence is deafening, and my fear that he's trying to detect me. After a lifetime, I hear footsteps entering my apartment. I hear a man's voice say, Hey, bud, you're in the wrong house, man. And I've never felt more relief in my life before this night or since. I hear my door close and I crawl out from under the bed and break down. The adrenaline and anxiety just takes over as soon as the feeling of safety washes over me. A female officer comes around to my side of the bed and puts her hands on my shoulders. I'm trying to keep it together and just failing miserably though. She let me put my clothes on, and I could hear three male voices coming from my apartment. The woman left and came back with a handful of clothes, asking if any weren't mine. But they all were, and I answered in kind. She shut the door behind her as she left again. I turned and looked out my window, and see no lights from the cop car on the street. I look at my phone and realize the call to 911 took 19 minutes. I can't explain the feelings that I had at this time since many hit me all at once. The door opened and the officer motioned to have me exit. And taking a first look at my home was almost as anxious as the event itself. But my apartment was just a, a complete mess to put it simply. Clothes were everywhere mixed with garbage and other belongings from my shelves and counters. But this man had removed items that he had intended on taking apparently and placed them in the outside hallway. They tell me that they had found him on the floor in the second room, completely naked, holding a bottle of lotion. In this vicinity, there was also a winter hat with an unknown substance inside. The officer was kind enough to throw that in the garbage bag immediately, and they tell me to look and see if any of the clothes in the apartment don't belong to me. I tell them no, but apparently this man entered my home completely naked and just proceeded to destroy my home. In his birthday suit. I noticed that the lid of my garbage can was filled with cat poo, and it seems that it had been separated from the rest of the bag. The rest of the garbage was littering the outside hallway. They asked me if I would like to stay here or go elsewhere, and thankfully my parents lived down the street, and I had an officer drive me there. I explained to my parents what had just happened, and in the next few days I have to explain this situation to what felt like half the town. The ridiculousness of this story catches people's attention and becomes a bit of a slight joke as well. I play along, attempting to be lighthearted, but I'm unable to disassociate from the horror that I faced that night. I know now that I should feel better knowing that he is in custody, but the events after the break-in do little to comfort me, if I'm being honest. An officer shows up with a subpoena to appear in court to testify, but I receive a call for a postponement. I just wanted this to be behind me, but that was not going to be. Because after a month, I finally call the phone number on the paper that I received and ask when they're rescheduling for since I hadn't heard anything. The woman
gentleman informs me that they apparently mailed another and I had just not shown up. I asked, where was it sent since I have not received a summons? She tells me that they sent it to my address, but the wrong town. It honestly blew my mind a bit. I mean, how can they not know where I live? The crime actually happened right there. She also tells me that he pled guilty and was given 180 days. What? And I was furious. That's only six this months. This man would get out in a short eight weeks for attempting to steal and entering my home. She reassured me that he also received another 180 days for a previous bench warrant that he had. So a year. But what justice is there that someone with priors gets a short three months for traumatizing a stranger? Anyway, after his release, I kept track of his location using the sex offender registry. He had relations with a child years prior, apparently, and it makes his statements about the kids' room just even more unsettling. He was arrested yet again for a fourth DUI shortly after his release and sentenced to five years with two suspended. I was happy for a while. I mean, my nightmares had ended, right? But the tension that I felt during my waking hours, although I lessened, it just never went away. It's been two years since this happened, and I've since moved three times. I don't know if I'll ever be content and happy anywhere, but I'm hoping that I'll find it someday. He was released six months after his conviction for some reason or another on parole. He immediately disappeared and fled from his parole officer and sex offender registry, and I'm currently planning a cross-country move to try and rest my mind. And I'm hoping to someday at least grow out of all the nightmares. So he was a predator too, huh? That's why he was in the kids' room with the lotion. It, ugh. Ah. Wow. You guys know my take on rapists and pedophiles, so I'm not even going to go into that. But I will go into whose apartment was he looking for? Because I remember a guy saying, you're in the wrong apartment or something like that. So whose apartment was he looking for? And what the fuck was he planning to do? Why the fuck was he naked? These are the questions. I don't know what area exactly you live in, but the police were taking too fucking long to get there. That don't make no fucking sense. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the reaction, leave a like, a comment, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and tap that bell icon so you will get notified every time your boy stuff drop new content, which I do seven times a week. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.